To create a virtual environment in Python, you're going to want to locate the folder of interest. This is usually where all of your code is stored, at the very top or root of the folder. From here, you can click up at the top and press CMD and then hit enter, which is going to open up a command prompt on your computer and it also makes that current working directory exactly where that folder was. All you're going to need is Python because by default it has this thing called pip. And if you don't, you'll want to go to Google, python.org, and you would download Python and install the latest version. You should have this thing called pip. If you type pip and press enter, it should show this. If it didn't, then you installed Python incorrectly. Depending on how much you've used Python already, pip, and then list, then enter, you may see a bunch of things or you may not see very much at all. For me, it has all the TensorFlow stuff, stats models, SciPy, and many other libraries because that's what's installed in my base generic environment. This is not a virtual environment. This is what's global to the whole system. We want to create a virtual environment which isolates these things and says by default, we don't have any of these things in the environment. If that didn't make sense, don't worry, it will shortly. To make a virtual environment in this folder, we type python-m vnv, and then this part is the name of the folder or the virtual environment. The virtual environment will actually create a folder, and generally we make it hidden with a dot. So I call them dot env, and then I press enter. As you can see here, it didn't actually spit out anything, but if you were to go to your folder, you would see that this dot env thing is there. Actually, you may not, because it is hidden, and that's the idea. But by default, I always have my settings so that I can see these things. I click the dot 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 and go to options, and make sure that in view, it has show hidden files, folders, and drives. So back to our virtual environment, we should be able to, what we call, activate the virtual environment with dot env backslash capital S for scripts backslash again lowercase activate. If you press enter there, if it worked properly, you should see over here this brackets with the name of your virtual environment, meaning that it is now active in this command prompt. This is very useful because if we type pip list, which shows all of the Python packages in this environment, you should see a very small list. Basically nothing is here because this is an isolated environment. If we were to open Python in this environment, so I'll actually write Python that activates Python in this command prompt. If I tried to do import sklearn, for example, well, that doesn't work. There's no module named sklearn. If I exit out, that goes back to the Windows command prompt. And if I deactivated my environment, if I write deactivate, well, you should see over here that this bracket .env is not here anymore. So if I were to write Python again, go into Python in our general environment, import sklearn, well, that is going to work because in our general environment, sklearn exists, but in this virtual environment, when that's activated, sklearn and the other libraries do not exist. So I'm going to exit again with exit bracket bracket and then reactivate that virtual environment. I can actually type the up arrow a couple times and that goes back to recent commands. If I press enter on that one, our virtual environment is again active and we don't have access to the Python libraries again. You generally make these when you want an isolated environment and to very specifically tell someone which packages are necessary for an application. So let's say you're writing a Flask app. Well, we'd probably need Flask, and so we will do pip install Flask. It'll take a moment to download that and everything else that it needs. And by the way, don't worry too much about these warnings. Usually it's not that big of a deal. If you did see red writing instead, that one's usually a problem. And now we should be able to check with pip and then list that Flask and its associated libraries are installed into this. And so if we were going to Python, then we would be able to do import Flask because it exists in this environment. But still, if we were to try and import sklearn, that one still doesn't exist. So normally we don't usually go into Python like this. Usually you're coding in some environment like VS Code, but it doesn't really matter what you're coding in. You'll go to the documentation, see what you need, or maybe you'll get an error saying that this isn't found and then you'll need to pip install something. Over time, you'll build up this virtual environment and eventually your application will be done. After you've finished writing your code, you then want to provide a file that tells someone or maybe a cloud deployment system what they need to install all the libraries that you you need it as well. And to do that, we do pip and then freeze this bracket like that. And then usually we call this file requirements.txt. 
and then press enter. We should be able to do type dir and then see that in this folder requirements exists. If you were to go over here, you should see requirements.txt, which is just a file that we'll use in a moment to install all these different libraries into a virtual environment. Now, if you were to put this on GitHub or to send it to somebody, you would need to send them all the code files and not Dot env, you would only send them requirements.txt. You don't want to send them the whole environment. As you can see here, this is already 16 megabytes. If you had, for example, TensorFlow in this, it would be 600 megabytes. You don't want to send that anywhere. You just send the file that says what someone needs to download what they need. So what your friend, boss, or maybe a cloud deployment system would do if they wanted to run your application, well, what they would need to do is make a new virtual environment. And so I'm gonna make just a new folder here. I'll call it other computer. It's just pretending it's someone else's computer or maybe your own. And we'll put that requirements.txt file and anything else they would need, like the code files. They would go in here and just like we did before, CMD enter, make a new virtual environment with Python dash M VN, I'll call this dot env2. They would of course need to activate that environment and then to install all those libraries, well, at first you can see that they don't have any, but to get all of those ones, you would do pip install dash r and then requirements dot txt. You can see it downloads everything that is specified in that file. So if we do pip and then list, then it is the exact same environment as the one you specified earlier. That's pretty much all you need to know. Drop a like if it helped you out and subscribe to the channel if you're not already.